Fox 1046. Welcome back to Thursday's BT, the challenge worldwide, uh, avoidable blindness and how to prevent it. Uh, a catalyst when it comes to quality eye care would be this gentleman right here, Dr. Simon Holland. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, before we talk about the technology and how things have changed in the field, uh, yeah. this problem worldwide with vision and blindness, uh, how serious and how prevalent are these issues? Um, they're very, very serious. Uh, about a quarter of a billion pe people are blind for avoidable reasons worldwide or visually disabled. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there. We've got um, over 40 million completely blind, so they'd be legally blind. And they're usually in, uh, you know, poorer countries or areas of countries where they're, you know, there's minimal care. What are some of the common ailments aside from blindness, uh, eye issues where resources and support are needed? Well, a cataract is the leading one still. Um, the good news is that we're making great progress with the, you know, trachoma and so on. Um, and more recently, the problems we also see here in the West, you know, of diabetic uh, problems with the eye, um, those are becoming more common, more frequent. And as we look at the idea for treatments, um, some of the uh, footage you brought with you, I mean, you're touching communities worldwide, but how has technology changed? You're a part of a very interesting uh, program, the Flying Eye Hospital, uh, as a volunteer faculty member, and you've been there for years. Uh, how has technology changed to really help these communities that don't have resources? Um, well, it's allowed, uh, you know, excellent treatment available in many parts of the world that we thought was previously impossible. For instance, even lens implants, we weren't even doing those after cataract surgery, you know, 20 years ago in the developing world, was, but now that's changed, you know. And this is fascinating, this process, a hospital in the sky, I mean, you're training in countries worldwide, doctors on the ground, mm -hmm. how does this work? How long does it take to transfer the skill set so these countries can start treating patients on their own? Uh, we often start with a, a, a program with the Flying Eye Hospital because it's such a fantastic teaching tool you know, it's got so many simulators and it's all set up to video feeds and so on. So we can do, you know, demonstration and training. And then we try and spread that, you know, within the community. So we work in the local hospitals and then we have backup programs whereby we go back and visit and work with the doctors there. Because we're really into training, not so much providing the direct care, but training and because we can spread the, you know, the, the message further that way. And when you see the worldwide challenge of what countries are facing, you bring the hospital in and then months later come back and see the impact, uh, what stories stand out to you of change and progress combating blindness all around the world? Mm. Well, two, two that really stand One is when we were in Pakistan in the early days and we were training and the president came on the aircraft and he said, well, why don't we have these facilities in Pakistan? And we, we primed the doctors ahead of time. So they all said, well, you know, we need the, we need the equipment, we need operating microscopes and, you know, we need the training. And he said, right, it's done. And, you know, within three months they had all their all, all their hospitals, the major hospitals are upgraded in Karachi. Uh, so that was, you know, for training. So that was very comforting. You know. Bangladesh was a big one for you Bangladesh as well? Bangladesh was a big one also. When we first went there, there wasn't one working laser for diabetes in the country, yet there were, any, there were over 10 million diabetics uh, untreated. And we were able to set up a program and maintain it and support it so the local people could carry on. And now there are many lasers operating in Bangladesh. It's incredible to see the change that's happened. And locally, there's an event happening on Sunday. Uh, it's a physical feat of sorts, teams of yeah. five to 20 members, but what's happening? How can people get involved and support programs like the, the hospital? Yeah, well, we're very excited about it because it means everybody can participate. Um, we have this uh, Fed Express have been a very big supporter of Orbis and uh, at their ramp on Sunday uh, around noon, we're going to have a plane pull. So it's not being the Orbis plane, it's, they're going to be 757s, but they're 62 tons, 65 tons each. And we have teams of 10 that try and pull it in a competitive way. So and people have a lot of fun and you think, yeah, I, nobody can pull a plane, but it's amazing we can if we work together. And it's kind of a nice, you know, it's a nice sort of representation of what we can do with world blindness too. If we all work to pull together, work together, it's a bit of a cliche, but you know, we can make great things happen. And we're just trying to raise the awareness of what we can do for blindness. Because the exciting thing about world blindness is that 80% of blindness is avoidable or treatable. So it's, you know, it's, it's a very positive story really. But the plane pull's fun. And I'm sure, you know, people have, you know, it's our ninth year in Vancouver now. And um, we have we have a lot of fun with it. Well, families can come down and support. Uh, of course, we just put details on screen for you. Uh, Simon, great to have you on the couch. Okay. And uh, congrats on all the great work you're great. doing uh, all around the globe. Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, speaking of worldwide events, how about this? World Cup, are you watching? Uh, the Iceland fans, they are.